What's up guys, Dr. Joey here. If you find yourself mindlessly snacking all the time throughout the day, this video is for you. I wanna share five super simple strategies that will help you stop overeating. Let's go ahead and get right into it. One of the reasons you might find yourself snacking despite wanting to lose weight and control your food intake is that you feel hungry all of the time. The simplest change you can make to your nutrition that's gonna help you feel full throughout the day and prevent overeating is to focus on eating as many whole and processed foods as possible. These include things like fruits, veggies, beans, nuts, dairy, whole grains, and animal-based foods like steak, fish, and poultry. These foods tend to be less calorically dense and have more protein and fiber than highly processed alternatives, which will help keep you full throughout the day and reduce the amount of food that you eat. By focusing on eating more whole foods, you'll also end up eating less processed foods as a byproduct. The issue with processed foods is not that they inherently cause you to gain weight. Instead, it's that they're engineered to be really freaking delicious, so they're super easy to overeat. For example, this study by Kevin Hall randomized participants to consume either a highly processed diet of mainly foods like chips, sodas, and candy, or an unprocessed diet for 14 days. The two diets were matched for calories, sugar, fat, fiber, and macronutrients presented to the participants. So from a nutritional standpoint, both of these diets were pretty similar. However, even though the researchers controlled for all of these variables, the results show that the participants consuming the highly processed diet consumed an average of an additional 500 calories per day compared to the unprocessed diet. The second strategy to stop overeating is to follow a high protein diet. Protein is the most satiating macronutrient, which means that compared to carbs or to fats, protein helps keeps you fuller for longer on a per calorie basis. For example, if you eat 300 calories worth of chicken breast, you're probably gonna feel fuller for a lot longer than if you just ate 300 calories worth of white rice or chips or donuts. On top of its effects on satiety, protein also has the highest thermic effect of food, meaning that it requires the most amount of energy to break down and digest. So if you eat 100 calories worth of protein, you're actually absorbing slightly less than if you consume 100 calories worth of carbohydrates or fats. The difference in calories burned due to the thermic effect is minimal, but it is worth mentioning. Now, you can't be on a diet that's just 100% protein, but if you currently don't eat that much protein, increasing your intake should help improve satiety and reduce snacking. A good rule of thumb is if you usually have three to four meals per day, you should try to consume about 30 to 50 grams of protein in each of those meals. Aside from the types of foods that you eat and focusing on protein, the way you distribute your food intake throughout the day can also impact your snacking. In general, people who eat more of their calories earlier in the day tend to have better hunger and satiety regulation and better body composition than individuals who tend to eat more of the calories later in the day. For example, in this clinical study, researchers tested the effects of meal timing on hunger and satiety. Participants were divided into two groups. The early morning group consumed 45% of their calories at breakfast and 20% at dinner, whereas the dinner group was the exact opposite. They consumed 20% of their calories at breakfast and 45% at dinner. So one group had its largest meal in the morning while the other group had its largest meal at night. The results show that the early morning group reported significantly lower hunger and improved satiety compared to those who ate more of their calories at night. If you currently don't eat much in the morning and you tend to eat way more at night, try to slowly start increasing the amount of food that you eat for breakfast, which might actually help you feel more energized, which can result in being more physically active throughout the day, and it may also help reduce snacking and overeating. Really quick, guys, before we get into the last two strategies, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love if you take a second to help me out and like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future content. Alrighty, strategy number four is to identify trigger foods and keep them out of the house. Let's face it, Sometimes we overeat because we're hungry and sometimes we overeat just because we're bored and there's food around. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while and watching my content, you know I'm not a proponent of labeling foods as good or bad, avoiding certain foods at all costs, or labeling foods as healthy or unhealthy. That's because these kinds of behaviors can lead to super restrictive dieting habits that don't result in any sort of positive health outcomes. That being said though, I do think it's important to find ways to minimize your snacking if you wanna maintain a healthy body composition. For example, if you absolutely of ice cream and you have a hard time not eating it if it's around, it's probably best that you don't have three different pints of ice cream in your freezer at all times. Willpower really only takes you so far. If you make it more difficult for yourself to have these foods by simply keeping them out of the house, it's going to inevitably result in you snacking less on these foods. One rule that I set for myself is that I allow myself to have any foods that I want whenever I want, but I have to physically leave my house to go get it. If I want ice cream, I have to go to the ice cream shop to get some ice cream. I'm not going to keep a tub of ice cream in my 
my freezer because I'm just gonna eat it all in one night. This is a super simple way of restricting how much snacking you're doing without labeling foods as good or bad and telling yourself you can never have them. All right, strategy number five to help stop overeating is not nutritionally related. It's actually to make sure that you prioritize your sleep because your sleep can influence the type of foods that you eat as well as how much you eat. For example, this study showed that a night of sleep deprivation resulted in 13% increase in ghrelin concentrations. Ghrelin's also commonly referred to as the hunger hormone because it essentially tells your brain that you're hungry. The increase in ghrelin concentrations was accompanied by an increase in hunger as well as an increase in larger portion sizes. In other words, if you're chronically getting poor sleep, it's more likely that you'll feel hungrier throughout the day and eat more overall food compared to sleeping sufficiently. If you struggle to fall asleep at night, here's some simple things that might help you out. Make sure that you avoid any large meals about two hours before going to sleep, avoid caffeine five to six hours before sleep, avoid artificial lights from your phone and your TV, and make sure that you have a cool dark room for optimal sleeping conditions. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you're able to implement these five strategies into your day-to-day -day life, you'll probably start to notice that you have fewer cravings and less hunger, which should help you reduce overeating and make it easier for you to achieve your weight loss goals. Peace.